Hey guys, another budget phone is here. This time, Samsung Galaxy A51. There is a 5G variant available at slightly higher price, but this one here is a 4G LTE model. I will unbox first, then I'll show photos and videos taken with A51. After that, I'll show how Fortnite runs on this budget device. Let's unbox. This is Samsung Galaxy A51, unlocked model, made in Vietnam. Right, so this color is Prism Crush Blue, and it has this slight rainbow hue to it. I think you can see somewhere on here. Single firing speaker, USB type C charging port, SIM tray, power button, volume rocker. Let me power this on. While it powers on, let's check what's in the box. SIM pin. I need that. Charging brick. USB type C cable. No earphones. So that's that. Let me pop the SIM tray. Now this one has 128 gigabyte of internal memory, four gigabyte RAM. Let me pop the, the SIM tray out. Here you can see it supports nano SIM and micro SD card. You can use up to 512 gigabyte micro SD card. So that's nice. Now display, 6.5 inch diagonal, FHD Super AMOLED. It has in-display fingerprint scanner. But if you prefer, the phone offers face recognition unlock as well. Camera, from the top, five megapixel depth camera, 48 megapixel main camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide and 5 megapixel macro shooter. Photos and videos are included later in this video for you to check out. This phone can shoot up to 4K at 30 frames per second, but not at 60 FPS. There's no water resistance, no wireless charging, but it's got a headphone jack. All right, so I'm gonna set this up and I'll be right back. All right, so it's up and running now. Nowhere on Samsung's website, I could not find information whether this phone uses Samsung's in-house Exynos or Snapdragon processor. Here I can confirm they use Exynos. Go to CPU, it says SOC model, Samsung Exynos. They don't have Snapdragon here, they use Exynos. But Considering the price, I guess this is something they, they had to do to achieve whatever uh, the profit margin that they're aiming for. That's that. Now they have Bixby on the left hand side, but you can disable this if you don't want to. Double tap to wake. And you can use fingerprint scanner to unlock. And for those who prefer face unlock, you have an option here. You can use face unlock as well. You can show you here, you go to settings. Lock screen, screen lock type, one, two, three, four. Don't do this. You can see it says face and fingerprints. Right now I'm only using fingerprints, but if you want, you can use face unlock as well. Let's check the language, because this is an unlocked phone. Let me go to general management, language and input, language, add language. Now, on this page, they only show these languages, Espanol, German, French, Italian, Portuguese, Vietnamese, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, Chinese. Uh, but this is not all. If you tap on the three dots on right upper hand corner and you tap on all languages, then bam, they have all these languages. So that's nice. Let's check some photos and videos now.
a little selfie video. My arm is fully stretched. What did you guys think of photos and video quality taken with Galaxy A51? I think during the daytime, photos are decent. The focus is not ultra fast. If you can be patient for a second, it gets the focus right. The photos look good in general, but when you switch the lens from a standard lens to ultra wide lens, there is a large gap in color. And that's actually quite common among phones that have ultra wide lens. So smartphone brands like Samsung, Apple, they all try to compensate color difference by a software. Unfortunately for this phone, I think that software power was just not there. Now when it comes to video, this phone does not have OIS. This phone only has digital stabilization. The digital stabilization on this phone is actually not bad if you're taking photos and videos during the bright daylight. At night, or low light situations, that digital stabilization is just not enough. The image becomes really jelly. It's not something I would feel comfortable, not just for sharing, but for looking at it myself. But then again, we always have to consider the price to performance ratio. Now, let's see how Fortnite runs on this budget phone, Galaxy A51. All right, so Fortnite is up and running on Samsung Galaxy A51. A51 packs Samsung's in-house Exynos 9611 CPU with Mali G72 GPU. So let's go to the settings first. Now, as you can see, 3D resolution is set at 75%. This is the default. I'm going to first play the game at the default 3D resolution at 75% and after that I'm going to lower this 3D resolution all the way down to the minimum 37% and see what kind of game experience I will get and after that I'm going to increase this 3D resolution all the way to 100% just to see what kind of experience I can get. So for now let me get back to 75% 3D resolution because this is the default and let's play. Okay, so the game started. I'm seeing the frame rate around like 12 to, oh, sometimes it drops to the single digit, but on average, it's about 13 FPS. I'm gonna jump off around here. Okay, so there's a freeze. Uh, quite a bit of freeze here. Now frame rate is down to single digit sometimes and then but it quickly get back to like 12 13 fps okay let me get off around here oh major freeze Let me get some uh, shield. Come on, shield. Let me hack you. Oh, I so want some shield. Oh, no, no, no. I'm dead. Okay, well, let's get back to the lobby. It was a short gameplay, but I did experience quite a bit of freeze and it doesn't happen often. It happens, it happens too often at 3D resolution set at 75%. Now let's go back to the settings. Let me reduce 3D resolution all the way down to 37%, which is the minimum. And what kind of uh, frame rate benefit or uh, gaming experience um, I can get. Okay, let's play. All right, so the game has started. Um, right now, the 3D resolution is set at 37%, which is the minimum. 
how's the FPS looking? Okay, I'm gonna jump off around here. So the game does still stutter even at 37% 3D resolution. But anyway, I'm gonna keep playing and see what kind of uh, uh, FPS and overall gaming experience I can get. So right off the bat, you can see the image looks a lot more pixelated and that's because the 3D resolution is now set at 37%, which is like the minimum. But that's the whole point. We're just trying to figure out if setting 3D resolution at minimum helps you uh, uh, with the gameplay experience. Major, major freeze. I'm getting um, frame rate almost above twenty. That's not bad. Now, I'm, I think I'm getting the better frame rate, a lot better frame rate than before. When I had uh, the 3D resolution set at 75%, uh, but then I feel there's this new problem here. The problem is that the image is so pixelated, it's not easy to distinguish between the enemy and, and the background. It just makes it that much diff more difficult to see. Uh, looks like there's... I can't see well. It just, it's so, oh, I'm dead. Okay. All right. So anyway, I think setting the 3D resolution at minimum does help with frame rate, but I get this new problem, which is the image is just so pixelated. It just makes it difficult to, to see the enemy. So let me get back to the settings. And this time I'm going to increase the 3D resolution all the way up to 100%. Like so. Now, we just saw that setting the 3D resolution down to 37% helps with FPS. Uh, but then the gaming experience was not that much better for me because the image just gets so pixelated with the lower resolution setting. It made it quite difficult to see the enemies, at least to my eyes. Okay, so the game started. Now the 3D resolution is set to 100%. I'm going to drop myself off around the same area so that we can compare FPS. All right, open my parachute here. I'm gonna drop myself maybe around here so I can get some weapons. Oh, major frame rate drop. Okay.
All right. So yeah, setting the 3D resolution all the way up to 100% does help visually. It makes it that much easier to spot an enemy that's far from you. Yeah, like this. When I played the game at 37% 3D resolution, it was very difficult to spot an enemy. But now having 3D resolution at 100%, it makes it that much easier to spot the enemy that's a bit far from you. Because you're playing this game on such a small display and it's difficult to spot an enemy that's far from you already. So this is a trade-off, you know, some people might prefer better graphics um, to having higher frame rate. Some people might prefer the opposite. So that's your choice. I hear a chest. Okay, it's a delay. Let's try to get some. Whoa, who shot me? Who is that? All right. So also, there is a delay in your thumb input and button input, and when it's displayed on the screen, like turn right or turn left, there's this like split second delay. Whoa, it's an Iron Man? Oh, dude, I did not think he was there. Hey, stop. Oh, okay. So I saw that robot coming down from the stairs. I was already trying to move, but it was not reflected on the screen. I know I sound like I'm making an excuse, but that's, that's how it is. And just wanted to show you that. All right, so let's get back. What did you guys think of Fortnite gaming experience on this phone? To be honest with you, I was expecting a bit more punch out of Exynos 9611. I mean, just look at the statement on the website. They state the chip is said to bring realistic visuals with less lags to gamers with enhanced graphics processing performance. And they throw in this 3D racing game image here. Now we gotta read their disclaimer. It says the images are simulated for illustration purposes only. Yes. So perhaps I shouldn't have expected much in the first place. Overall, this one is a go. Why? Because right now, Samsung is offering a huge discount on Galaxy A51. The retail price is $400 in US, but they're giving $175 off, making it $225 before tax. Now, I would not recommend this phone at $400 because there are other phones that excel in photo and video quality and excel in gaming experience in the same price range. But at 225, it's really hard to beat what they're offering here. So if you are in a market for a budget phone and you are an occasional photo taker and super casual game player, then hurry. I don't know when they pull the discount off. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again.